This is the world's smallest town, Monowai, Nebraska. You read that sign, right? It has only one resident. Why? Is there a simple explanation? Or is there something sinister going on in this town? What are they hiding in this town? And why hasn't anyone moved here? Thankfully, there's one man brave enough to investigate the place that visitors might not be welcome. This is the smallest town in the world. There's one person that lives here. It's actually crazy. And some say that's for good reason. This town used to have a population of over 150 people, but it slowly deteriorated down to just one person, which makes you wonder, where did all the people go? Did they simply move to a bigger city? Or is there a spine chilling secret hidden within the town? The story of getting to this town of just one is honestly as strange as the town itself. The closest airport is hours away, and finding a nearby hotel is, well, impossible. As I got closer and closer to this mysterious place, the towns just kept getting smaller and smaller. I'm in Gross, population two. It is 100% bigger than Monowai. The towns are literally getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Why? Clearly there's something in this area of northern Nebraska that's keeping people out. It's actually just so weird. I mean, look at this. Like, nobody's here anymore. Weirdly creepy. I mean, why would anyone live out here? Do they have something to hide? Well, apparently they do, because rumor has it that the only resident of the world's smallest town has turned down interviews from Oprah and Jay Leno. As I drive through these towns, I decided to find someone, anyone, who could give me more information about the area, and whether or not this is even a good idea. As it turns out, it must be super lonely around here, as finding another living soul nearby was basically an impossible task. It feels like they just left. The town is gone now, and we're about to go to a town that has one person. I'm kind of worried. Which leads me to believe that maybe I'm entering a place that I'm not welcome. As I was closing in on the smallest town in the world, I realized that the only way to answer my questions was to go deeper down the rabbit hole. Welcome to downtown Monowai. So yeah, it's a hopping downtown. You got the tavern, the library. That's, that's it. That's This is the town. This is downtown. I was starting to think that maybe there's no one here. Or if there is, maybe there watching me. You get that weird feeling about small towns like this. So strange. Since nothing is open yet, and by nothing I mean the only place in town, the Monowai Tavern, I decided I'd better take a look around town. That is, if we can still call this a town anymore. So far it doesn't look so good. I found several buildings that were in deep stages of decay. So much so, I could almost push them over. I actually just don't understand how a building just becomes like this. How does that happen? What is it about churches that are abandoned that are so creepy? It feels weird. I don't like being around it. I don't even know what's in here. Yeah, I just, I, this kind of stuff just creeps me out. Like somebody used to preach in this church. That was their job. People showed up and came to church. It's also just interesting that this town is so small that you can't even go to church here anymore. That which just doesn't exist. Strange. Bro, there is a basement. Ah, it's so scary. Dude, this is all, this is beekeeper stuff. Oh my goodness. Even the bees are abandoned. That's what this used to be, pun intended. Oh man. All of our friends from the B movie are dead. Barry B. Benson, where is he? <laughs> the tavern was gonna open in about 10 minutes and this little library gave us our first clue as to who lives here. This is an insane amount of books. Sheesh. So cool. Even though this town is completely abandoned, it somehow has a relatively well-kept public library. And strangely enough, the door was open. It's almost like they wanted me here. Instagram Isaiah, pre-YouTube, would love this. Set me up in a chair kind of fireplace holding this. Good, perfect photograph. It seems like an awful lot of books for just one person to read. With the tavern finally opening up, it was time to hopefully meet the individual who lives here and get the answers to our questions. I'm a little worried to go in there. I don't know, I'm kind of nervous. When I walked into the tavern, I was met with the shock of my life. Yeah, I'm just as confused as you are. That's a 90-year-old lady living by herself in the world's smallest town. Not only does she live here, but she runs this tavern. But for who? She's the only resident. I mean, look at how many tables are in here. There also seems to be a lot of memorabilia about the town. I came in here for answers, but now all I have is even more questions. This might be the strangest experience of my life. My biggest question right now is, can I get some of those eggs? They look bust. 
So while I ate these delicious eggs, we had a chance to chat a bit, which led me to asking if she'd be okay answering some of my questions on camera. Surprisingly, she said yes, even though I learned that she's turned down some pretty big names in the past. Oprah Winfrey and um, Rosie O'Donnell, they were getting together a show, and I said, well, I tell you what, before you go any further, I said, you just as well know I don't like Rosie O'Donnell. And she said, you don't? I said, no, and what's more, I don't like Oprah Winfrey. One thing's for sure, Elsie is a savage. Elsie lived here with her husband, Rudy, who the library is named named after. Sadly, he passed away in 2004. Elsie went on to tell me that all those books are actually books that Rudy has read. Talk about a bookworm. But if she isn't the one reading the books, what is she doing with all of her time? I open around nine every morning. Oh, through the day, I, I'm just in here cook for whoever's around or send out beer or whatever they want. While driving here, I didn't see a single soul, which begs the question, who's stopping by? But what we do know is that from time to time, the FBI is stopping by. Who is this lady? Have a sting operation come out trying to catch us on beer or cigarettes. Do you get a lot of sting operations oh, coming out? Oh, God, yes. Really? I had to run one out last week. <laughs> so they come in here trying to buy beer or something? Yes, and they're yes. Underage. Oh, my goodness. But they can't lie to you like this last one the other night. I said to him, are you 21? Because he looked all of about 15. I'm not 21, he said. <laughs> she's acting like she's the sheriff, but turns out she kind of is. What are all of your titles in Monowa? <laughs> well, mayor or the whole town board. <laughs> okay, the whole board too. <laughs> You're the village marshal as well, so you enforce the law. <laughs> one of the reporters one time asked me if I ever put anybody in jail, because there's an old building up here that years ago used to be a jail. And I said, no, I said, I, if I put them in jail, I'd have to cook for them. So I just tell them, you know, go on home and behave yourself. <laughs> go on home and behave yourself. Oh. Oh, that's so funny. Wow. So you're the village marshal, you're the mayor, you're the bartender, yeah. and the only citizen. Yeah, that's right. I began to ask Elsie the most important questions. And little did I know, Elsie was about to blow my mind. So how long have you lived in Monowai? From about a year and a half old. At peak, how many people lived in Monowai? Between 140 and 150. Elsie told me that slowly everyone left the town, and soon, that 150 became just her. What do you not like about the big city? <laughs> the crowd. To me, you ha don't have much privacy. You don't, you're almost restricted to a smaller area. I, I, I mean, that's just my opinion. I wanted to know what kept someone of her age coming back to open the tavern every single day. Oh, something to do, I'd say more than anything. I. That's what I've often said. I can't imagine getting up in the morning and wondering what I was going to do till evening, you yeah. know, or time to go to bed again or whatever. Turns out, Elsie's most important role isn't mayor or sheriff. It's a friend to talk to. A lot of times I'll spend an hour maybe in the middle of the afternoon just sitting and visiting with whoever's in here, yeah. you know. Because especially if there's like one person comes in, I... I feel like you should spend some time with them, yeah. you know. Even if I don't know them, I, I get acquainted with them. Yeah. <laughs> but I've always been a people person. I like to be around people. Kind of ironic that the lady from the smallest town in the world loves being around people. But there's actually quite the community that supports Elsie every day. Turns out people aren't trying to keep their distance. In fact, some of these folks make long drives just to visit Elsie and keep her company. Everybody needs somebody to talk to sometimes. And I try to not give them any advice. I try to just listen to them. You know? Suddenly we were interrupted and I was face to face with one of the passerbys. Yeah. Howdy! Hello. How are ya? You? <laughs> you guys from Texas? Oh yeah. People were flooding in and soon this place wasn't lonely at all. <laughs> and honestly, I'm thankful I made the 15 hour drive to spend the day with her. Although it did just dawn on me that I have a 15 hour drive home.